Hey everybody, welcome to week number one of Generative AI for Journalists, discovering what data can do with your guide, Syl Hamilton. So last week, I saw all of you in the introductory module where we spoke a little bit about the structure of the course, what we'll be expecting to learn, and how to download and install JupyterLab Desktop, a program for running Python code on your computer. And we'll be using JupyterLab together with Hugging Face, which I also gave you a demonstration of, to run language models, specifically language models, on our computer. But I think a really important question, especially for a course like this, is what is generative AI? Because it's in the name, and here I am talking about language models, and they seem like they might be two very different things, especially if you don't know what a language model is. But a language model is really, or really tends to be what people mean when they talk about generative AI. So if you talk about making something with a computer program, if you're talking about using an algorithm to generate new text or audio or even images in the background, they're all something called a language model. And so for this course, I'll be taking you through a guide on what language models are and more broadly, what modeling is. So join me as I go through week number one, what is modeling? So to understand what modeling is, we first have to get a firmer grasp of what artificial intelligence is because generative AI, language modeling, AI are often all spoken about in the same paragraph. So artificial intelligence doesn't exactly have a firm definition, but you can probably trace one definition back to when it was coined. Yes, when artificial intelligence was coined way back in 1956 at a workshop at Dartmouth College, uh, being held by John McCarthy and Claude Shannon. John McCarthy is famous for developing the first uh, functional programming language called Lisp. And Claude Shannon is a mathematician who came up with the language model. And they convened with a number of other researchers at Dartmouth in the summer of 1956 for a workshop on what they were calling artificial intelligence. And in this workshop, they coined artificial intelligence to mean simulating a human doing something, and their example was calculating. So artificial intelligence was to simulate how a human might calculate something, how a human might calculate numbers, how a human might calculate language. But the whole idea is that AI is to simulate, is to emulate, is to mock. And so in the eyes of John McCarthy and Claude Shannon, they were really concerned with artificial intelligence being the practice of getting the computer to think like a human. And uh, artificial intelligence would later be called machine learning. Uh, so symbolic AI was the first age of artificial intelligence propagated by John McCarthy and Claude Shannon. It didn't get very far. There was a lack of funding from the 1950s when they started up through the 1980s. AI didn't get very far. Uh, in the popular consciousness, it was like Tron. It was like Terminator. It was like Skynet. And uh, artificial intelligence was seen as being a bit of a hokey subject. But uh, with the dawn of machine learning in the 1990s, which you might be familiar with, especially because Apple chooses to call things like generative AI, not AI, but machine learning. And that speaks volumes about what the technology is. So artificial intelligence or machine learning is to have the computer to learn to think like a human. And uh, so what that means is that simulation to think like a human is kind of like prediction. The computer is predicting what a human might do in a given situation. So if the human were, for example, uh, given a sentence and asked to predict the final word of that sentence, we might, the computer might predict how we would respond. Or if we were given a set of numbers and we were asked to calculate the numbers, artificial intelligence is having the computer predict what we would say. Machine learning, neural networks, artificial intelligence, these are all very broad and vague terms, all really used to mean one particular thing, and that is to predict how a human would respond. And to predict how a human might respond, you need to simulate that thing. So you need to simulate how a pe person might think. You, might dis you need to simulate how they might calculate something. You need to simulate how they might predict a word. And that key task, simulation, involves prediction, because the computer is predicting us. So another way to describe prediction and another way to describe simulation is that the computer develops a model of us. And this is when we start getting into what a language model is and what a generative AI model is. So a model 
really in the most vaguest of terms is an approximation of something else. It's something that is approximating something else. So a model, uh, you can think of it as like a scale model ship, say one inch equaling 10 inches or one inch equaling 10 feet. It's a tiny version of a bigger thing and it's meant to mimic the bigger thing. And you can make a model out of everything. You can make a model out of wood, but you can also make a model out of neural networks, which are, you might have heard of them before, a neural network is simply just a collection of artificial neurons. So a collection of artificial neurons run on a computer by, by an algorithm, by a computer program, is training itself to predict how people might think. And what comes out the other end, that bundle of neurons that have learned to mimic human behavior is called the model. Because in a sense, it is modeling how humans think. It is a model of how humans think. And so a language model is a model of language, if you allow me the tautology. A language model is a model of what we say and how we speak. A language model is a collection of neural networks that model language. And more specifically, uh, it's a probabilistic model of language. So whenever something like ChatGPT predicts what we would say, whenever something like ChatGPT uh, emits words, it's predicting what a human might say. That is the task that we give ChatGPT. And so to step backwards a little bit, artificial intelligence is the act of getting the computer to simulate a human. And the way by which it simulates a human is to predict how that human might react in a given situation. And through learning to predict how a human might react, it develops a model or an understanding of that person. So when we talk about image generating models, when we talk about text generating models, these are all collections of neural networks that have been trained to mimic how people think. And so, uh, with that, we're now going to move over to what language models are. And I'll explain a little bit more by what I mean when I say that generative AI at the core of it is really just a language model.